what do I want to tell you about artificial intelligence? Why is this a cornerstone or a pillar of digital industry, Industry 4.0? Why is it one of them? Why do we have artificial intelligence in industry? Let me start on a traditional note. Three quotations, quite and quite new ones. Two objectives. I have the right to define the terms that will be using. I'm the first one, so let me do it. And these will make it possible to decompose 4.0 industry and AI that has been coupled before. What's underneath? Let me start with the definition. Machine learning and AI have been quoted one besides the other. Let me let me offer the definition. AI and the science that is behind it that has been designed uh, human thinking machines. Intelligence is the main word. Machine intelligence is the fraction because most of the processes based uh, from experience has been implemented into machines. How do people learn from their mistakes? We know how to transfer this into machines. And the second objective, decomposition, as I was saying. If you check uh, the first quotation from Hanover Messe, Hanover Messe, well, coronavirus, we've got materials for 2020, knowledge from experience. What is this experience? Experience means lots of data. Experience means lots of intelligent appliances that are coupled together. Connectivity data appliances. This is IoT, whole lots of data. AI starts using many other technologies somewhere underneath. And look at the Ron Bush quotation. Errors and coincidence. So there's a kind of tricky algorithm behind. So we've got algorithms on top of that. AI is supported with many other technologies when in Industry 4.0. I'm going to show you this with a well-defined SCAF uh, for technologies. SCAFs for non-business insiders. X-axis is effort costs that we have to bear with the technology so that we can see an output, something that the technology give us, gives us. Mainframe. In the 50s or 60s, everybody was investing in that. ICT was being created. In the 90s, it was the top. Everybody was impressed. And 2000 forwards, decline. Are the technologies client server PCs. So when we look at the S curves of all types, we can see a nice picture. You will see that we are at a very, very nice moment in time. I wouldn't like to use the words like unprecedented, but for the whole ICT sector, uh, the period is nice because there's accumulation of technologies. Artificial intelligence plus cloud plus visualization plus IoT has got a positive feedback loop for amplification in industry too. Quantum computers, you might have noticed a great advancement this year. And we are closer and closer to the sweet spot. Every organization making little contribution into a technology is able to attain great yield and wonderful performance. How do organizations uh, cope with that? How do they adopt the changes? Coping with the situation creates further challenges, further problems. 
that we need to address in our organizations in a specific way. I won't be listing the things that every organization is facing at the moment because the landscape of technology is changing vibrantly. Let's see the product mix. There are more and more of them. Batch one, something that keeps reappearing. So processes in organizations are more and more complex. They require more agile attitude. So in addition to AI, we have agile. We have platforms. The last line. Our businesses, we recognize it in Accenture in a more sustainable way because we have the life cycle of the whole project. It requires platform attitude that invites business partners. We no longer, sh you should no longer have linear but platform-based uh, supply chains. These are just examples, and there is a whole array of challenges that are being addressed, and the accumulation of this addressing creates a kind of image of the future, the target state for industry, for the plant of the future that is supported by technologies and artificial intelligence in particular. So let's have a short walk over the plant of the future. You're going to see where the artificial intelligence and digitization exists. Let's look at the general platform. Not only is this a technological platform, we can say AI is based on end-to-end -end integrated platform, technology and architecture, top-level cloud, fog, edge, on-site. Not necessarily is this the technology thing, it's a business thing. Business partners are invited onto the platform. Some of the data is made available through open API sourcing from clouds. Much broader a notion rather than only technology. And we need to have security in place. Everything that is done is done, and the control is of utmost importance. Let's walk further on. This is the shop floor. There is the Internet of Things there. The previous panel focused on this very important topic on the quantity of sensors and data that is generated by this kind of digitized factory. Artificial intelligence is much more than the data quantity. It's also the data quality. We need to think, and this is the challenge for every organization facing digitization. What do we want to attain? What kind of sensors we need? Where the data will be the subject of brokerage activities? Where the previous layers um, producing the data transfers the data to for storage? What will it be used for? The Internet of Things can be expanded to include the Internet of People. Let me refer to the discussion from the previous panel. Upskilling, reskilling, this is of vital importance. A digital organization expects more from our employees. New employment work methods, employment of extended reality, We need to uh, take care of the security of uh, people. Internet of Things is better safety and security of employees. We continue our walk. This is the analytical command and control center for the plant. Visualization, visualization technologies. It's nice to have algorithms 
but the algorithms might be shown to man. The outcome of the processes must be the subject of brokerage to the people that care about specific information. And this should be included in this factory of the future. And use cases, specific objectives that we want to attain thanks to digitization. Predictive maintenance is the holy grail that is shown in the picture because artificial intelligence has been advanced in predictive maintenance. Although obviously you can think about many other areas of uh, manufacturing like quality control, but predictive maintenance is uh, the name of the game these days and obviously it brings very sizable profits. So speaking about predictive maintenance, uh, what does it look like? We need to analyze um, loads of historical data which are properly tagged. It uh, probably takes uh, data from um, years ago, so we uh, analyze maintenance uh, failures and uh, sensors, so on and so forth, and using specific technologies, we can develop algorithms that can uh, pick up certain properties responsible for failure. Those properties can be translated into some specific uh, probabilities of downtime, downtime, and then we can take appropriate action, and it AI may boast very effective um, uh, advice in terms of maintenance. Uh, this uh, interval, maint maintenance interval, can be prolonged from hours or days to even weeks. This is uh, one of the interesting use cases. Uh, anything is possible having the right architecture, and you need to pay close attention to architecture from uh, various perspectives. As the architecture of a plant using digital technology and artificial intelligence. It implies a um, perspective of uh, sensor, actuator, analytics, uh, connectivity, or cloud uh, computing on the premise. Another perspective of uh, data privacy, very important uh, perspective of a general robustness of that architecture. We need to be able to design our solutions in such a way as to make sure it uh, supports um, the exchange of certain elements. So in other words, it must be modular if necessary. So in this modern industrial plant architecture is even more important than before. Now, if we are able to put everything together effectively, I'd like to uh, finish with this slide, then we can achieve incredible effects, super effects. What are they? Uh, a report from the World Economic Forum tells us about the most digitized production plants in the world. In January, so two months ago, it's 44 uh, factories, mostly in China, in Europe, only a few in the United States. Now, what does the World Economic Forum do? They check on the use case in those uh, factories, so which ones are being used and what their effects are, what benefits, profits are for the companies. I provided uh, use cases associated with AI. I am not going to comment on this. Machine learning, deep learning. 
it already exists. It is there. It's not. Uh, it's not a future. It is the present, and it's going to be increasingly present if you move back to the S curve slide. We are closer and closer to a point where these technologies are even more effective. Thank you very much.